from the, the stream. Right. So you went from the stream to the hall. We went from the opening of the catch basin on quiet wood and ran a camera all the way through to the outfall of the creek. That's more than 75 feet. Okay. You are correct. That's like okay. 200 feet. That's so is it? That's about right. They ran a camera the entire length of the way because you don't know where it separates or what we were dealing with because it was all underground. Got it. Well, anyhow. That makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, other questions? No. Um, I want to talk about the draft minutes. And I'm just going to make a couple comments. This, this last set of draft minutes was the briefest I've ever seen in the six years I've been coming here. And it's the most non-transparent board minutes ever that I've ever seen. And I have absolutely have no idea what was said by any of the board members, which means there's no accountability because we don't have any board members talking about anything in detail or discussion. And that's it. Thank you for your comment. Any other comments? Yes. Stephen? Okay, so let's start with County of Marin Legal Services. What was that for? This is concluded uh, legal business, I assume, so it should be disclosable. Um, it's actually current legal business, not concluded legal business. I don't have a complete breakdown in front of me, but it's for legal matters that the district is utilizing counsel for. Uh, I can read. Uh, that's not actually telling me anything. Is, it, is that include the uh, Millers? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going through this, and I'm still not understanding how accounts are are being uh, assigned here. For example, 3352 Robert Robin Bruton is listed as a vendor, but it's reimbursement for office supplies. She's not a vendor. The vendor would be, I would assume, Staples or wherever else uh, you hold accounts. Why is it going through Robin Bruton as a expense and not directly uh, from the vendor? Can I respond to this one time, please? Thank you. Um, we do not have a typical bank. We do our banking through the county treasury. They have petty cash funds. We can't go to the bank to reimburse those petty cash funds because we don't go to the county treasury to take out cash. So we write Robin the check from our treasury fund. She cashes the check to replenish her petty cash fund. That's how our petty cash funds work. Okay. So with Staples, for example, you have a vendor account. But for whatever Robbins uh, Bruton is buying, there are no accounts. The reason why I'm making a point of this is not to cast a uh, negative light on Robin. It's the fact that we don't know, there's no uh, direct accountability for the vendors. What, I mean, we don't know what that is. It's we just, actually have receipts for every penny that is spent through petty cash. It is all tracked, it is all maintained, it is all approved. Okay, so the University of California has a $50 maximum for petty cash, and apparently the uh, Marinwood CSD is very liberal with uh, the amount of uh, untracked cap, uh, expenses that they uh, allow their employees to uh, make. This is such baloney. No, it's not such baloney. It's, it's, it's actually... It's actually, uh, you can look it up. I, I've sent the information around, so if you don't want to uh, pay attention to the way that the University of California does business, I suppose that's your right. But, you know, there is some amount of accountability that you guys need to follow. You are a public agency, and you are becoming less and less transparent. The, the meetings are becoming shorter more obscure and now we don't even have written records from the manager of what happened that month. How does that serve the public interest? I'm um, going to continue down yes, because Steven. I'm not finished. Steven, your time is up. Okay. Okay, you must, no, I'm going to continue because Steven. every other public agency does not have this arbitrary limit that you've set here to shut up conversation. That's the only reason you do it, to harass me and to 
and that's why we have a, a sheriff here and to harass me and to shut up dissent. And I, that, this is my right as a citizen. I have a right to redress my government, and I intend to do it. You are dangerous and unstable, and I feel threatened by your constant. Attack. And I feel threatened by this bullshit. Excuse sorry, me. this this stuff that you this Wait, stuff that you're you're creating Steven? to to this to create a conflict. Sorry. And, and you, I keep hearing the same words over and over again, and I, I know what it's for, and so you're using words like that, Isabella, and shame on you. Shame on you, and shame on all of you, you that do that. Involved. This is a democracy. Okay, so what's the process now? I've given two warnings. Um, okay, U.S. No, Bank no, no, no. Corporation. Once again, we, do, we have a single payment. We do not have vendors. And there's, that means that there's a lack of accountability. Stephen, thank you for your comment. We're going to move on. And if you'd like to continue around. Right I now, would so like you to. to can you can please leave the uh, meeting. I will not leave the meeting. I will not leave the meeting. I'm not out of order. Done, I am redressing uh, the specific you subject you in minutes. the agenda. And here we go. Uh, 3382 U.S. Uh, Bank Corporate Payment Services. We do not have any, any vendor lists. Stephen, I'm asking one last time. I would like us to all have proper decorum. I do not receive proper decorum. I get interrupted constantly. I get threatened like Isabella did. I get threatened. One last time to please you can stop. ask me again if you wish, but I am not. Officer, could you please stop them? What? Are you going to listen to them? I'm going to. Look, I have a right to be here, I have a right to film. I have a right to ask questions. I have a right to get answers. And as you can see, they do not want to give answers. Stephen, they said they're moving on. If you'd like to address it later, do it the next subject. Understand? It's OK. OK? You don't get answers anymore. It's I, don't, I don't buy that. Shh. I don't okay. buy that. That's, that's, that's the, the democratic process. You've been Allow the meeting meetings. to continue, please. Okay. Save your comments. Let them know the next topic. Okay. Are you, officer, am I uh, being threatening? They're am I being meeting. threatening? They give you warnings to stop. Is okay. that threatening that I refuse to stop and I, I refuse to, to I, I, I refuse to back down from my civil liberties? Is that a threat? They're meeting. <laughs> so if you're not going to listen to the warning, they're going to ask you to leave. I don't want that to happen to you. So they're going to ask me to leave because yeah. I. I I've, I've, I've pushed them like this, but the reason I'm pushing them like this is because they are asking me to to basically shut up. You have and not ha you have a good, you have a message, but the delivery is over the time limit. So if you want your message to be heard, I would, how many times was I interrupted here? I'm not here to debate that. Uh, uh, you're not here to debate no. that, but I unfortunately I am because are every time I you? speak, yeah, I get right. interrupted. Okay, they're moving on next subject. Thank you. So let's bring it back to the board and can we call the question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Moving on to item D, public comment open time for items not on the agenda. Uh, just going to remind her for the three minute limit on this. And uh, any comments from the public? Linda? Yeah. Um, well, I'm really sorry to follow this, but I am going to give you a negative. I really believe that the public is being kept in the dark about the park maintenance Anchorage storage shed project. And there's a few other little things, but the, the project that's going on, and I know that um, Hansel is spending time and money, you know, there are bills coming in, there's things being done, but we don't have any updates on it. And about six months ago, I noticed there was, it was November 20th, 2018, in the architect billing from Hansel, there was one and a half hours that was charged by Hansel for a meeting with a landscape architect. And I didn't know, I think I heard that we were going to have, that somebody was going to have landscape architects come in and give us bids on landscape architecting, but um, don't know how many architects were connected, uh, 
who came in, who bid on it, if there were bids, um, is there any paperwork on what's going on with the landscape ar architecture, and I would also like to know the name of the company and the architect, and also what has the, this landscape architect been doing in the last six months, because we ha I haven't been able to find any bills from the landscape architect, so if we contacted them, or if Hansel had a meeting with him back, he, him or her, six months ago, there probably should be some bills. And the other thing I noticed was some guy named Kleinfelder for the Park Geological Consultation or something. I didn't know if these bills were related to the park maintenance project or not. And I, if they are related to the park maintenance project, I think we should know what's going on because of the Park Maintenance Shed Eichler building project is a really big project. And a lot of people are really interested in what's going on with this project. And I think, again, I, I don't know who this Kleinfelder guy is, and maybe it's totally unrelated to the park maintenance project, but it would, it would be helpful if we would know whether it was the park maintenance project. And there was only one other one, resolution remedies billing for the park department legal services back in February. And I also wanted to know, this is more legal services from somebody I've never seen before in your billing. And I just wanted to know if the resol resolution remedies billing was related to the park maintenance project or something else. So again, I just, I'd just like to know some of these things don't make sense to us because we've never heard of them and we haven't heard you talk about them and we haven't seen them in any of your reporting or the district manager's reporting. So I think in my opinion, it would be nice if we had information about these. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your comment. Stephen? So there's two people, two members of the public here, two staff members, uh, and a police officer. Um, we were, uh, I noted that we were paying the police officer 65 bucks an hour to make you feel more safe. Um, I think at this point, um, maybe it's necessary for you to say what threats uh, that you have received either from me or any other member of the public and if you haven't and you have uh, no legitimate concern there's no reason for such an expense um, i know yeah we haven't heard about the the maintenance shed project and then now we have another doozy with the the sewer pipe um, we don't even know how much it's projected to cost. We do know that uh, uh, Eric said that uh, Hansel's expenses would be $12,000 all in, comparable to what the competing bid was. We're now up to $30,000. He's been working since then. I'm guessing it's $40,000. We could have bought, purchased a prefab unit, installed it, uh, at, at this point, just for the expenses that uh, Bill Hansel's unfinished design has cost the district. Um, I know that he's requested another, you've ex requested another 60 days. I don't see that in any reports. That's obviously a big piece of news for the community. Um, you know, we need, a, we need updates. You can't, you're not, you have not been elected king and queen of Marinwood, okay? I know you think you have, but you really actually are representing the taxpayers of the district, the fiduci your, your fiduciaries. And when you're, you're allowing uh, business practices that are unaccountable, uh, your cash management practices, when you're hiding expenses, when you're hiding liabilities, you are not representing the people and the interests of the district. I urge you to consider a more community focus in your uh, uh, in, in doing what you do. That's all I have to say. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to item E, District Matters. Item one, resolution 2019-04, determining the fiscal year 2019-2020 appropriations limit on tax proceeds. So we have a lead-in memo from Eric, and then also this is an action item, so I have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. 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 Second.
Second. Okay. Uh, discussion. Anything uh, you want to say, Eric? Or? I'll give you a memo. I mean, okay. this is comes through the California okay. Constitution, Article 13. The, the methodology, as well as the data, is provided through them. So it's like a formality, for lack of a better term. Okay. House, this is just housekeeping again. Mm -hmm. uh, the, we annually we have okay. to update our appropriations limit. And it is updated through a methodology provided by the state as well as data provided by the state. Okay. Okay. Anything from the board? Okay, any comments from the public? Stephen? Yeah, uh, we have record, uh, we have some, several records uh, going on this year. It's been going on for the last couple of years. We have record revenues in the form of taxation. Um, we have record expenses. Um, we have record employees, we have record liabilities, we have record uh, capital needs projects going forward without accountability. You know, this is not a path to uh, success. Uh, and those of you who, I think all of you actually look at spreadsheets for a living, you can figure this out. Um, I don't know what you guys are doing, but we can control our expenses uh, by watching, you know, the productivity in the various areas of the district, in the rec uh, programs, in the, uh, the special events, and of course our fire department. And I don't, honestly, I don't understand what you guys are doing, you seem to be rubber stamping every increase and not actually questioning the, the fundamentals here of the district, which we all know are out of whack. We're not going to be able to pay our pension obligation going down this path. Thank you for your comment. Anything else? Any other comments from the public? Okay, coming back to the board, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries unanimously. Item E2, Resolution 2019-05, electing to become subject to the California Uniform Public Construction Cost Accounting Procedures. Another uh, action item. Do I have a motion to approve and remove? Okay, I'll second. Second. All right, then I would need a memo and then any discussions. So if you want to. Um, to be clear, this, I, again, another detailed memo. This is, there's two action items on here that are related to this. One is the resolution. The second is actually the uh, policy that is also included. Uh, this, again, is, you know, comes through the state, comes through uh, the Department of Finance, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and the public contract code. Um, I gave you a pretty good memo. I also included some live links in there to plethora of more information. I tried to also give you some statistics on uh, local participation as well as statewide participation in this. Uh, in short, as I put in here, uh, the district is currently subject to a public uh, contract code that caps our threshold to move into a formal bidding procedure at $25,000. This will significantly raise that to, uh, we can do anything by force account or by direct negotiating contract up to $60,000. Between uh, under $200,000, we can go through an informal bidding process, and above $200,000, it goes back to the same formal bidding process. A couple notes, this does not impact the daily wage thresholds, and this does not uh, impact uh, Department of Industrial Relations contractor registration thresholds. All of those things still have to be met. This just changes how you can go about and find uh, people to work on public projects. Okay. All right. I, I, I would add, and I bolded it here, uh, I strongly recommend this district approve this. Okay. Any questions, comments from the board? Would you also um, say a word about the list of uh, vendors that you would be um, yes. collecting? Uh, well, when you go through on an informal bidding process, and I can talk uh, either more about that now or more about that in the next item, uh, the district is required to build a list of qualified vendors, not 
necessarily recommend it. Anybody can be on this list. It goes through, there are four different trade journals and the trade associations that are specifically listed uh, within the procedures policy manual. You have to send out notice to those. Anybody who puts a uh, response to that says, I want to be included on your list, gets put on this list. So then when you send out a project through informal bidding, you send it out to that list. Option uh, two is you can also send out a notice uh, request for bids through those same four trade journals. Until we build a list, we would be doing both for any large projects that are over these thresholds. Um, and typically, my understanding is it takes a few years to really build up your list, and people don't have to respond. I, we can add vendors who we've worked with in the past uh, that are qualified, and you have to separate the list by trade. How how long or how old is this was this ability? Could we have had it a couple of years? Um, we've had this ability for quite a while. Uh, it's this. Let me rephrase that. This was enacted in the eighties. Uh, they review all the threshold amounts. They change every three to five years. As what's known as the uh, uh, the Uniform Cost Accounting Commission. Uh, goes through and looks at various uh, raises in, in rates and labor and everything else and then they come up with new thresholds. We've had this for a while. We, it would have been nice to have uh, done it for a while. Most places that have formal public works departments and things along those lines have done that, but so have a lot of uh, uh, typically agencies that take on a lot of public projects. Okay, thanks. Okay, comments from the public? Stephen? Yeah, this is icing on the cake. Um, as probably all of you are aware, if, uh, I did send a letter to uh, the district attorney requesting a forensic audit of the district because I believe that your uh, accounting practices are so uh, out of sync with uh, well, business standards, let's, let's use that term, that uh, we really need to know what's going on. Allowing basically, what, 10% of our budget to be spent with friends of the district, we know how this works. How did Bill Hansel get hired? Why is he still on the job after $40,000 worth of work that has no physical manifestation in our park? The reason is that it's a political uh, relationship. It is not good policy to allow uh, unrestricted use of purchasing authority uh, to a public agency when there are so many political interests involved. We are a very small district. I believe that these thresholds are far too high for our district. And, uh, well, look, look, we've been around about 55, 60 years, I, I don't actually know uh, how long. Uh, we haven't, as far as I know, we've, we haven't done it. We ne we've never followed the rules. And I want the rules to be followed here. Uh, they're meant to uh, hold you guys accountable, but also hold it accountable uh, to uh, the citizens. Uh, the general manager just got a review, and I assume it was a good review, um, and a raise. Can you, and can you speak if, topic, please? Uh, could you, could you not interrupt me, please? We're just you reminding stay on topic. you to stay on topic. That's all we're asking. I, okay, may I, may I continue? Because I am talking about the very topic that uh, we want. And I actually, every time you do that, Leah, I will talk further, okay? Yeah, yes, I you. will talk, talk further. And if you're, you try to interrupt me again and, and, and violate my First Amendment rights, maybe, maybe the Marine Sheriff will, will uh, abide by you and, and we'll, we'll, we'll see how that works out for the district. But I don't want that to happen. I actually, the reason I come here is not to get beat up each week, uh, but to, to actually to discuss issues for the future of our district. The, um, the financial accountability here is way off the rails, and uh, I, I, I think, I know you're going to approve this, 
But I'm, I'm telling you, we're, we've got to look at, at the business that you've also approved where, where basically money has gone missing. Thank you for your Thank you. Um, all right, any other comments from the public? Linda? Um, I did read this memo, and just please tell me if I'm misinterpreting this. Um, it's going from 25000 before it used to be a formal bidding pro pro process, if the thing was 25000 or more. And that's what you got involved in with the mm -hmm. fireman's kitchen. And now it's going up to 60000 or less, or maybe 200000 or less. So does that mean we can do things informally? In other words, the district manager can go out and find people, and he doesn't have to do the um, put the notice in the paper and get everybody to come in and then submit bids and then um, mail in their bids and have them opened up secretly in a meeting, that kind of thing. I believe that Eric. Excuse me. Who? Who am I supposed to be talking to? I just, asked, I just asked Leah if I could respond, and she said yes. Well, I thought it, the please don't I'm, interrupt. I'm it. just responding that Eric actually talked about this when we started off and you are correct it's going from 25 to 60 and it's going to be going to trade journals he swapped that's what he was talking about that the four trade journals and that there's going to be a, a vendor list and on up to 60 it can be from that vendor list do you remember him saying that just a couple minutes ago and then we can also do the extra bidding. Yes, I do remember. That's what he was talking about. Oh, I'm so stupid. My brain no, is I'm fried. Just, My I'm brain just is saying fried. that's what he was talking I'm about. I'm so stupid. I'm, I'm not saying that. that. The, I'm not, not saying that. that My perfect. question I was, was that he does this mean we don't have to go through the formal right, process? Thank you, Linda, for your comment. Here's my question. It's a question. We're here to get answers. We're not engaging in a back and forth. You, well, you're not giving the answers. No, I, and you do I don't understand. We're requesting them. I'm so stupid. I don't Linda, understand the thank memo. You. Thank you. I, mean, I didn't say that. I will ask Mr. Dean at another time. Thank, thank, you. Time. thank, thank you. you so much. You're wonderful, you guys. You're wonderful. All right. Um, thank you so much, Linda. Um, let's call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item E3. Draft informal bidding policy for public projects subject to the California Uniform Public Construction Cost Accounting Act and procedures. So this one, um, do I have a motion for? So, so second. Move in a second. We motion second. Yeah. Uh, all right. Discussion. Questions. It's not going to discuss. It's just the policy. To go I, to do you have any other? I would just say to be clear, both the. Resolution that you just approved and the policy. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the vast majority of all of this language came directly from the manual uh, from the commission that I referenced earlier. These are their sample templates that they put out. Okay. Anything else from the board? We don't have to go through an attorney to approve language. It's already been reviewed. Okay. okay. Any comments from the public? Uh, e E3? Yes. I, I think um, the long standing uh, cozy relationships with certain vendors need to be re examined. Um, I, I would like to know if we're actually getting uh, uh, competitive uh, rates on some of our services. As I go through the uh, uh, bills paid it seems way out of whack but it's vague enough that I don't actually know what is being expensed you know what what things are for so um, honestly I think uh, before you approve this prop policy you really need a real vigorous look um, at your business practices we've talked about how the cash is very uh, I guess you only uh, you only report profits, and there's a lot of misuse of, of, uh, uh, of petty cash as a basically as a slush fund, and um, 
there, the, the bidding process for years has been really wonky. The uh, uh, fireman's uh, kitchen was a great example. We ended up with one vendor mysteriously that two people knew, and that's who we used at the cost of uh, six, seven times what, what I had found on the open market. And you didn't even actually look at that other thing, that other bid. Um, I think it's kind of disgusting, and I hope you all feel a little bit dirty tonight. Can I, can I in an ironic twist, um, this would actually solve a lot of those problems, and the reason we've got such small bids is because it was such a small project that I had to go through a very formal process. This opens this up so that it doesn't have to go through such a formal process that many more small contractors would participate in. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Ooh. Linda? And are you the one that makes the decision informally on um, any of the contractors that want to bid on a small project? I would say that it would probably go on a case by case basis, but uh, typically my authority to make such expenditures doesn't oh. range that high. Okay. Thank you. All right, bringing it back to the board, I'll call a question. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item E4, district manager report. As there's air, you have a lot to make. Yeah, well, and then, yeah, thank you. Uh, just a few quick notes uh, on here. Um, and again, I didn't have something in writing. As you can see, it was been a very busy month with all the stuff that's on here, plus gearing up for everything else. Um, so this is just much more informational than anything else. Um, I wanted to let you know that the we got results back from the vehicles that went out to auction. In total, uh, we got $7,479 7, 7, from those three vehicles at auction. The dump truck brought in a little over $1,300. The utility truck brought in a little over $6,000. And the cheap vehicle brought in a little less than $100, uh, to, which is what I expected. Uh, so when you factored in what it cost to tell it in their commission and everything else, uh, wasn't much on there, but all the same, uh, they're gone. It was a nice way to utilize that. Uh, I have uh, recently uh, gotten our name in the mix for a state grant process um, through something known as Proposition 68 that is being run through the State Department of Parks and Rec's uh, Office of Grants and Local Services. Uh, this could potentially award us up to about $200,000 and this works out, so I'll keep you guys informed on that. This is for uh, replacing equipment, not necessarily for maintenance or repairs, and we have some ideas on it. Um, and again, this goes through uh, the State Department of Parks and Recs. Uh, and then, but I expect it's gonna be a while before we hear anything new on this. Just heads up. Uh, and then yesterday, uh, Luke and I, along uh, with the on-duty fire department crew, the Centerfell chief, the deputy chief, and two other members of the Centerfell fire department personnel who work in emergency management and vegetation management, sat down to look at some vegetation management uh, uh, projects and ideas for this coming year. Uh, we looked at maps uh, focusing primarily on what's known as the wildland urban interface borders, basically uh, homes and properties that back up to vast amounts of open space. As you know, uh, we doubled the budget from last year, which was double from the year before that, but it's a $40,000 budget on that. Uh, we're looking to establish some priority zones, uh, ideally to create 100 foot uh, breaks from property lines amongst property that's ours. Uh, and we're also, once we kind of establish those, we get to understand how much acreage or square footage we're talking about we'll have uh, then move on to getting cost estimates uh, ultimately we're just trying to identify projects that are going to provide uh, uh, the greatest impact or the greatest good on those uh, and we're also allocating portions of that to uh, information mailer mailers that are going to go out to every resident uh, with recommendations for residents uh, and them protecting their own properties uh, and then once we do get a plan set in place, uh, we'll put some information out via social media channels every which way we can to let people know these are our plans, these are the projects that we're working on. Needless to say, uh, our entire budget isn't enough to make it done. Well, it'll make it done, actually. Uh, it'll make it done, and we're focusing on the highest priorities and the highest areas of threat with it. Uh, 
Um, and so I appreciate Sandra Bell helping out with that. They certainly have people who uh, uh, are much more experienced on those lines than we are. So uh, I'm thankful for the chief for allowing us access to those people and his personnel as well. So that was helpful. And I uh, appreciated the on-duty crew yesterday uh, who came by and joined too. So that's been an interesting conversation with them. Uh, otherwise, that's about it. Uh, see if we can get captains. It will include that. It also include people referencing your website, which has got all the bio-wise information and everything else on it. Should I make a note for that? Or do you want to know why I was asking that? That's okay. So we've kind of talked about this in the fire commission, you'll see, in the many minutes, about firewise in the Marinwood area. The problem is, is that we're so big that we're hoping we can find multiple captains in the various little enclaves within the Linwood. Mm -hmm. And then those captains would do a smaller area because they would like for it to be 80% compliant. And if we have the whole community, it would be harder to get the compliance versus if you did smaller areas. Right, and then you get, yeah, okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> anything else um, from the board on the district manager's report? Mm -hmm. Any comments from the public? Stephen? Yeah, uh, well, first of all, I don't know, I, I would really like to know why you're not uh, taping these uh, uh, Marinwood Fire uh, Commission meetings. They meet so infrequently and we get nothing in the agenda and um, don't you feel like you're responsible for uh, uh, getting the information out to the public? Uh, the uh, general manager has not uh, issued a written report and we ha do not have a written report on the uh, uh, Marinwood uh, maintenance facility but I do know as you're all probably aware I because I've been talking to the uh, community planning department there's there's issues you asked for a 60-day extension I would like to know what what it is that you need to work on in my analysis as I look at the site plan um, you simply do not have room in that plan to turn around vehicles to operate landscaping equipment and if you continue the plan you're just the, the more you you go down this road the more money you're going to waste and i certainly hope someone at the end of the day is responsible for this but um you know the, the public actually supports uh the replacement of the maintenance facility and i don't know why you've chosen the most uh, uh the process that's creating the most uh, problems with uh, the public. Uh, virtually everyone on Quietwood that I talk to who is aware of the size and scope of the, the project is opposed to it. You haven't put out the uh, story polls as was requested on April 21st. We need that. Um, I, I mean, are you going to go ahead with this or not? And if you're going to go ahead, what is, how are you going to correct some of these thorny issues that Quite frankly, I don't even see how you can get around. It's just a matter of uh, physical space. You're trying to put too much on that lot. Um, can I, can you please respond to this question? Thank you for your comment. Your I, it was a question though, and I asked, I, 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 I would like, I, look, not uh, we have not had any reports. Why aren't we getting reports? Why aren't we? We're getting um, taped meetings. Why? Why does it get verbal meetings instead? Verbal things instead of written information. More is going on in this district. You guys are aware of it. We're aware of it, and you guys are hiding it. Thank you for your comment. Moving on. Any other comments on the district manager's report? Okay. Thank you. Hearing none, we will move on to item F: Fire Department Matters. Item one, draft minutes of the fire commission meeting June 4th. Um, has everyone had a chance to review it? Any questions or comments? I mean, I can continue my comments about fire-wise, if people are interested, but otherwise, I can. If you have questions, I can talk about it online. Okay. Do you, do you have more to say? No. Anything else from the board on the draft minutes? Okay, any comments from the public on the draft minutes of the fire commission meeting? Stephen? 
since uh, PG&E is threatening to turn off uh, power to our residents, many of whom are elderly and have medical devices who may be uh, negatively impacted for this, I'm wondering what the response is and how you're getting information out to the public so, you know, grandma doesn't die because her oxygen generator uh, goes out. Is that a comment? Are you going to listen to that? Are you going to answer that question? Too secret? Um, yeah. So, moving forward and with what the chief has, there's some information on that, but the chief is aware of the people in the neighborhood along with our lovely fire department. They know who is in the what, and they've been reaching out to everybody. And I haven't gotten anything. What, what, what's going on? I have a medical device. Okay, so we're not, we're not engaging in a back and forth here. Well, Finish look, you, this is really important. You're the fire department, you, you run the ambulance, and you're not getting the information out to the public where you say that you are, and how is it getting out there? I suggest you contact the fire department then. How about I contact you because you're in charge of the fire department? Thank you for your time. Okay, any other comments? All right, moving on to item F2, Chief Officer Report and Activity Summary. Just a review. Never have time to review. Obviously, a lot of old people that I know don't have computers, but um, they, there was this two-page letter that really detailed a lot of information. So I know that it's hard for you guys to get information out because a lot of people don't have websites or uh, don't have computers. And in this particular instance, in my opinion, there's a lot of information that's getting out there, even in the news. But the letter, look at your mailbox today. Yes. It's in the packet. Oh no, that's a different one. Mm -hmm. Oh, one that's in the packet. Yeah, that's one in the packet. I don't think you put it in the first one. 
Alright, thank you. Um, okay, so the date of the next fire commission meeting is October 15th, 2019-2020 Measure A Work Plan. Um, all right, so we've got a lead-in memo from Eric, and this is also an uh, action item. Do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? All right, discussion. Do you want to start us off here? Uh, yeah, this just uh, for starters, uh, this is not required to be approved by the board. This is a practice we've had since Midray started before my time, so I just keep it going with this. Um, staff is recommending ultimately that we just continue on the course that we're on, following the same work plan uh, until that is completed. In other words, duly noted. Um, I did give you an update in terms of what we are expecting from revenue that came from the county of about another 90000 for this coming fiscal year. Uh, we had, I'm anticipating total carryover funds of about 237000 so when you do the math, we'll have about 327000 available in Measure 8 funds throughout this year. Uh, it should also be noticed, noted that while we are required to submit a work plan, um, the amendment process is fairly straightforward and simple and uh, involves a simple email sent to the coordinator on the county side that says, hey, we'd like to add this to our work plan or detract this from our work plan. And it usually takes a matter of a few days for it to be approved. All right. Any uh, questions, comments, from the Comments from the public? Stephen? Yeah, Measure A wasn't meant to, you know, pay for Bill Hansel's fantasy buildings. Um, we, it's, it's actually for trail restoration, uh, increased uh, accessibility, protecting wildlife, and um, also uh, maintaining recreation facilities. Now, I understand you're kind of lumping this into the, the great uh, gray uh, uh, objective of, of, of the park, but I want you to also consider that uh, we still don't have um, we have we have erosion problems on the in the panhandle. Uh, we need a railing uh, for uh, mobility access. Um, park benches, which also are a mobility issue, um, you know they cost 500 bucks a piece, and you could you could put in a bunch of them. You're completely ignoring one of your core your core responsibilities here and it's all going to a friend of yours bill hansel who lives up the street you know and yippee dippy hires you know you know, at a inflated salary that sort of thing but I, I i i maintain that 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 money is actually for the park and for the people thank you for your comment any other comments um, I'm just curious, is there, I know every once in a while we get um, an item in the bills paid, in, that, um, in the listing of bills paid that says Measure A. Sometimes it says Measure A, sometimes there's things that are related to the park maintenance shed planning or whatever that don't say Measure A. Is, is it attorney's fees that don't get included in Measure A? or like the um, the most recent five thousand dollar was it the filing fee for the design review? Is that measure A or not? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, but we haven't had attorneys' fees on the park maintenance project. No attorneys' fees. Correct. Oh, okay. Thanks. But is there a running list of measure A expenses? Of course. Because I thought there was um, something done to the community kitchen or the community floor or. Mm -hmm something you're going to use for measure aid um, money not recently but we redid the floor years and years ago with measure a money we used measure a money to repay tennis courts we've used measure a money to do uh, work to keep the pool operating okay. uh, we've used measure a money for a litany of different projects okay thanks you're welcome okay any other comments from the public Calling the question, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. 
Item G2, authorization to enter in a consultant agreement for completion and submittal of joint aquatic resource permit application. I like the acronym of JARPA for storm drain repair project. Uh, do I have a motion that we can? So moved. Okay. Discussion? Uh, uh, I can read this off. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so on Thursday, th this project, uh, because of the nature of this project, it's it's technically CEQA exempt, uh, meaning exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act and a lot of the notices, things that go through there. However, due to its proximity to the waterway over there, it still needs to, uh, the project still needs to go through an approval process with the relevant environmental regulatory agencies. This is what's known as JARPA, the Joint Aquatics Resource Permit Application. On Thursday, I met with several representatives, last week, I met with several representatives from these agencies, shared with them the project, they gave us their list of questions and confirmed that they would certainly need to go through the JARPA process. Um, JARPA is a fairly technical application, it takes a lot of time, if you don't, uh, once you turn it in, they have 30 days by which to review. If you don't get it exactly right, they shoot it back to you and say, we need more info, uh, which you have 30 days to complete, and it goes back to them for another 30 days. And at the end of the day, we don't have time for this to keep following back and forth because this needs to get prepared before the rainy season. Uh, my frustration was evident in this meeting that I don't understand still how the district is responsible for this repair, but until courts rule otherwise, uh, it's our problem, and it's only going to continue to get worse. Um, the, the drain is corroded, the drain's already causing sinkholes. The drain, once the next rainy season comes, is going to continue to destabilize the earth that rolls over the top of this CMP portion for 75 feet. More sinkholes will develop, and ultimately, you're going to wind up with a big ditch there. It's got to be fixed. There's just no two ways around it. Um, I don't necessarily have the expertise. These things are typically done by consultants or specialized experts or dedicated public works professionals, of which we have none of the above on this particular thing. Uh, in the essence of time and getting it right and making sure it's done correctly, I am uh, vigorously requesting that we bring on a consultant to get this done. And I don't expect it to exceed more than 6,000. I've gotten the names of several consultants and I've already talked to several of them uh, with uh, a couple of them being very highly recommended from other agencies, including like the Resource Conservation District, things along those lines at the County Marin, um, on consultants that they have used. Um, so I'm very uh, confident in the, in the people I have talked to uh, in particular. Thank you. Any questions uh, for the board? Uh, Any comments from the public, Stephen? Yeah. Um, so I, actually, I went out there too with a specialist and uh, got a little bit of education. Um, first of all, there are uh, two two holes side by side. There's there's apparently two pipes. One is corroded and very visible uh, from the surface, and then whatever's down underneath the the sinkhole is, well, whatever, we don't know, it could be up to eight feet deep. Um, you know, one of the things that bothered me about this whole thing uh, was the, uh, how this was presented. I, uh, Eric said there was 100 feet, uh, gallons per minute, or, or something like that, coming uh, from the storm drain, and uh, yet we see no evidence in the sinkhole of, uh, of any kind of water flow. So uh, as I examined this a little closer, I noticed that there had been a concrete patch on top of it. And um, as I had mentioned, I believe in a letter to all of you, that there has been repairs in this area. Uh, there has been a, a swale that was put in probably 30 or more years ago where there was a, uh, a walk bridge across. There's a, there's a uh, there's a culvert underneath the uh, uh, the access road. So obviously there was a break in that area before. There's a water issue that always arises on the, let's see, I, I call it the left-hand side, but it would be the north side of the road. Um, I'm not convinced that the, the, uh, the pipe is, is all, uh, that we, we don't have an intact pipe. Now I know you did a review and uh, you said that it was 100 foot or 75 feet, I'm not sure, but there's got to be probably 300 feet uh, of, 
uh, between Miller Creek and uh, Quietwood Drive. Now I know you can theoretically uh, do that with a 100 foot uh, 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 scope, but it doesn't sound like that was done. And I'm still very uncomfortable with the idea that we have a dry, basically a dry hole. Um, it seems to me that more exploration is needed. You need to scoop down there and you need to see the break. You need to see what's going on down there. Is this an old uh, break or is this, is this a new break? I, I happen to think it might be an old break, but I can't uh, be 100% certain. Um, you're about ready to spend a bunch of money here, and I just want to make sure that you're getting it right and not just repairing something that probably uh, shouldn't be repaired. Thank you for your comment. Any other comments, Linda? Yeah, um, I was, this is sort of along the same lines. I know that a lot of times we're reactive rather than proactive because you know we can't go spending all this money on inspecting this and inspecting that, but. Along the Panhandle, there are a lot of swampy places, drainage places, wet places, puddle, gigantic puddles in the middle of the summer, that kind of stuff. And I don't know if how many drain pipes come through the Panhandle from the neighbors and the streets above. If it, do we have a a map of how many of these pipes come this way, and is there a possibility that we could just run a video camera up some of these pipes to see if they're in good shape or if they're the same in bad shape and they're ready to bust and ready to sinkhole and I mean I, I would like to be reactive no I would like to be proactive on this to prevent any kind of long-term issues that might get worse and bigger and and that kind of thing so I don't know if we have a map that shows all the drainage ditches or the drainage pipes or whatever they are um, but it might be a good idea just to look up one or two of them where lots of muck and water and puddles and everything is. The water did not back up on quiet with during the heavy rains. Just it's normal. Thank you. That's all. Uh, all right. I'm going to bring it back to the board and call a question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Uh, moving on to item G3, Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Reports. Off. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, <clears throat> Monday starts our uh, big summer program season, and uh, we're really excited for that. This last few, this last month, but especially this last week, have just been a frenzy in the office with um, organizing and, and trainings, and you know, safety is always our number one concern when it comes to our uh, summer programs, whether it be our summer camp. Uh, program or our swim lessons and, and everything happening at the pool. So uh, Robin and Stephanie have been uh, leading CPR classes, running uh, preseason trainings, and making sure everyone uh, knows the standards and has their uh, their skills up to snuff to make sure that we have a really safe and a successful summer. So it's been fun to watch them uh, taking care of that, and, and I'm really excited for a lot of the new people we've hired. seem to be great, and we're looking forward to seeing the whole thing in action on Monday morning. Um, so a lot of preparation and planning has gone into it, and I'm very proud of how much everyone has been putting into it. Uh, and uh, yeah, well, it's going to be a lot of fun to have fun day. Um, Stephanie, I, she uh, had to had to take off, but I'm, uh, on that note, she just recently completed her EMT certification, and I'm really excited to have her expertise when it comes to the uh, lifeguard training and being able to have um, sort of uh, another layer of. Uh, of expertise and training to offer them, and um, we'll see how that manifests. But really proud of her; she just completed that um, a few weeks ago, and um, we'll see how that how that plays out. Uh, we've got our music in the park series coming up on starting Friday, June 28th, and we're looking forward to another uh, really fun series. And we'll have the lineup um, printed up and posted uh, hopefully by the end of the week. So I'll look for that. Uh, and it's just been a transition uh, with all of our spring classes and programs, a lot of them coming to a close um, as, we, as we move into the summer. So we had a great preschool graduation ceremony on Friday, um, which was adorable, and our preschool supervisor, Kate, 
uh, did an amazing job of creating this elaborate and just really cute uh, graduation for the preschool kids, and it was just the parents really appreciated it. And, um, I, I wish I'd included some pictures, but it was, it was very, uh, very nice and did a lot of work to do it, so we're happy with that. Um, moving on to parks maintenance. Um, the crew's been working hard, getting things ready for the summer, uh, making some repairs, adding some uh, shade structures, and getting things cleaned up. So a lot to do this week, but the guys are out working hard in the heat, and um, uh, they've been uh, going and going all in with it. We um, have uh, some projects coming up before the end of the fiscal year, of the new heater uh, coming in the pump room, uh, replacing some ventilation, and uh, updating some landscape, etc. Questions, comments from Clark? Who's responsible for the median coming from the freeway to Los Galinas? County and PG&E. Ah, uh, okay. I see. PG&E just... Because PG&E has a large easement, the incredibly overgrown portion of that is... Like, That's what I was referring to. It's four or five feet. Yeah, uh, no. Luke and I were actually just talking about Disgusting. that the other day uh, on that uh, and reaching out to see if they could bang that down and we've actually sent out the... Uh, uh, well, when I say we, uh, through uh, uh, WHE Center, has sent out some other specific vegetation management notices to some yeah, it was just commercial property. Every owners. morning, it's like, and they finally got the weeds taken out at the uh, turnouts on the off ramps. And That's Caltrans. Yeah, mm -hmm. finally. So, yippee. Well, I thought you were talking about the intersection. Las Galinas and... No, I'm talking Little about, I was talking about the median, but... Yeah, the median. Anything else for Luke? Okay. Any comments from uh, the public? Yes. Um, Steve? Yeah. So, uh, a couple things. I guess June's here, and June is a month that uh, seems like every weekend there's an event, and the, the public doesn't get uh, access, or very little access, to lap swimming. Um, I wish that you would... Uh, I, I know there's a number of uh, teams in the league, and I, need, I think you should uh, split the load with some of those other teams. I, I don't see why we should uh, bear the brunt of it. Uh, second of all, uh, with regards to the Lifeguard Academy, where uh, I learned uh, that you actually have a separate business called the, the Lifeguard Academy. You've got a website and uh, it's a fairly significant amount of money. How much money do you uh, make from that one activity? And where does that get uh, accounted for? The, what, what, which, which uh, company are you talking about? The Lifeguard Academy or whatever, whatever it's called, I don't know. Wait, oh, wait, oh, oh sorry, yeah. Let's gonna... finish comment, because we're not, like, before we do it. So you're not going to answer what, what the district is this, doing? This I think this is basic, because it is actually part of the rec department, it's part of the business, and it's, has never been reported in a public meeting as, a, as okay, far as so I know. I, this Isn't is that right, Isabella? This is time for comments, so do you have any further comment? Well, I would like some answers. Yes, I would like to know why it is that we don't know uh, what's going on business-wise in the rec department and why it's being hidden from the public. Thank you is there a reason for that, Leah? Thank you for your comments, Leah. So it's just a con you're, you're calling it a comment, it's actually a question. You actually look at the business, so why don't you why don't you ask that question? Why don't we have reports on the business activity? Why is it hidden? Thank you for your comment. Uh, do you have a comment, Linda? Yeah, I just want to say I just want to say to Luke, the tables at the picnic, uh, the horseshoe pits, are great. You guys painted them. No. They look so clean and new. Did you? Uh, Tell me the truth. No, not to my knowledge. Oh. <coughs> they look so good. Okay, that's all I wanted to know because they look really good. I thought they were painted. They were. Thanks, anyways. Thank you. Um, the date of the next Park and Recreation Commission meeting is June 25th. Oh, got a question about that. Yes. Um, in May, well, actually, two or three times already this year, the Park Commission meetings have been canceled. And in May, there was supposed to be an inspection at the Creekside Park. And so in June, there's supposed to be an inspection at the Mini Park. 
just wonder if those are being combined. They can't be combined. I wonder if those are being forgotten. I assume you would have to wait and see the agenda. Oh, I have to wait and see Thank because you. I can't talk to Valentine. <gasps> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wait and see. Moving on to item H, new and other business. Request for future meeting item, agenda items. Anything from the board? Okay, any comments from the public? Yes, uh, I believe that there's serial uh, meetings going on okay. and that you're conducting business in private. And I would like uh, an examination of the business practices. I want the, I want the, the money spent, I want the revenues brought in, I want to see how that's applied to the expenses. And I, I do not want you guys to say, it's a comment, ask somebody. Thank you very and have a smile and, 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 you know, this. Oh, I feel threatened. I feel threatened about what? That you have to be accountable? Yes, you should feel threatened by that. It's called collusion. And if you're, if you guys are hiding money, if there's, there's money gone missing and it's unaccounted for, and you guys know about it, you, you're part of that crime. Thank you for your comment. Any other comments? Okay. Um, item I: recognitions and board member items of interest. I think we took care of it earlier. Anybody else have anything? Any comments from the public? Item I. Yes. Steven? Um, wonderful things are happening in this community, believe it or not. Um, people are getting out, they're talking with one another. There's an, a renewed vigor. Uh, looks like uh, development is coming our way over at Marinwood Plaza. There's a lot of reason to celebrate some of the things that are happening. As you all know, even though it's not part of our uh, district, the Dixie School District, it's being renamed. This is a chance right now to uh, reimagine our community. And I would hope uh, to do that would be a uh, spirit of neighborliness, accountability, and you know, just you know, protecting our quality of life and making sure that uh, we are uh, acting uh, responsibly. So I would like to commend all those unnamed people out there who are putting in the positive energy to our community. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, moving on to item J. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Um, I, I'm sorry. I don't know if I should say that in item I then. Um, oh. I will not be able to attend the next Oh, okay. I will be away.